Hey, how's it going, guys? This is uh, Lino right here at Texas Made World and Academy. We're going to shoot another episode. We're going to get into a lot of detail on the basic stuff for you guys at home that are starting off. Uh, if you're going to another school and you're having some trouble on how to arc your rod, what does the number mean on your rods, uh, what do they stand for, or just the simple stuff of long arcing or having a short arc or traveling too fast on your well, there's a lot of, those are the simple mistakes as a beginner that you usually do when you're starting off. And uh, just remember, your body placement is one of the most important things. We had three different sizes for your 7018. The first one, hopefully you guys can see it right there. Your first one is your 332 rod, and then you have your 1 8 rod, and we have uh, your 532 rods. Your 532 rod, you're not really going to use it out at the facility if you're at school or at home. You want to start off with just a 332 and a 1 8 rods. So basically, these two rods right here is the same rod, exactly the same rod, except for one thing. Once one of them is slightly bigger than the other one. So just remember, if you're measuring your rod, you don't measure your rod from the side of your flux. So if it's a 1 8 rod, you're not going to get it from the, the side of your flux. This white part is your flux. So you're gonna get your measurement from the bare metal side. This one on this side is your 332 rod. This one on this side is your 1 8 rod, okay? So those are 7018, keep that in mind. Right here we have a 6010 rod. You usually use this rod for uh, your root pass and hot pass. Right here you have a 1 8 rod. So right here we have uh, your 6010 1 8 and then you have your 7018 1 8. Both of them are 1 8 rods. If you look at the bare metal side, they're the same width. They're exactly the same, but if you look at the side with your flux, one of them is slightly bigger than the other one. It doesn't mean that rod is bigger, it just has a more flux to it than the other one. This one has less flux on that 6010 than the 7018. So keep that in mind, they're the same rod size, 1 8, but one of them has a little bit more flux than the other one. So here you go, we're gonna do a little explanation of what do the numbers mean on your rod? So if you look at your rod right here, if you look at your rod, that number right there, we're gonna talk about what that stands for. So right here we have uh, the 7018 rod, we have 309. We have a lot of different rods right here, but usually the two you're gonna work with out in the field the most would be your 7018 rod and your 6010. So right here, your first, your first letter, if you have a letter, that'll be your electrode, it stands for electrode. The second two numbers would be your tensile strength. So it, don't, it, does, it does not mean that you have 70 pounds of te tensile strength. If you multiply those two numbers times 1,000, it'll give you 70,000 on that. So that means you have 70,000 pounds per squared inch. That's the, the, the tensile strength on this rod. If you were to weld a squared inch by an inch by an inch, the, st the strength on that would be 70,000, okay? So that's what those two first numbers mean. You multiply that times 1,000, it'll give you 70,000. So for an example, if you have a 6010 rod, the first two numbers is six zero, so that's 60. You multiply it times 1,000, it'll give you 60,000. So right here we have the third number, the number one. It pretty much stands that you could, uh, it means that uh, you could use it in any weld position. You could use it on flat, vertical, horizontal, overhead, whatever you want to do with that rod, you'll be able to do that, okay? And then the last but not least, number eight right here at the end, is pretty much just telling you what kind of flux type it is, what kind of current, more information where that rod is falling on, if it's a low high or whatever it is on that rod. So just keep that in mind. The first two numbers are really the most important ones out there. Uh, for you guys that are at home or at the school and don't know what those mean, the first two numbers you multiply times a thousand, that'll be your tensile strength. That'll be 70,000 on that. Another, right. another thing, uh, whenever you guys are running these rods, just keep in mind, one of them, if you're using a smaller rod, it's common sense, it's, you're gonna need less heat to burn that rod. So make sure you adjust your temperature. If you gotta get a little piece of scrap and, and set your amps correct, the correct way that you need it, make sure you double check on that. Um, it just if you're using a 1 8 rod you're gonna have to turn up that temperature a little bit higher on that so if you're using a 332 rod you're usually going to be running somewhere about 80 to 90 amps it all depends what position you're welding on 
If you're using a uh, 1 8 7018 rod, which is the bigger rod, you're going to have to turn it up anywhere from 120 up to 130, 140, depending what position you're on. The 332 rod, you're going to be using it mostly for your verticals, your 1 8 rods, you're, you're pretty much going to use it more for your flat position, horizontal positions, and even on your overhead. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's common sense. Turn up your temperature depending on what rod you're using. If you're welding on that same plate over and over for a long period of time, make sure you adjust your temperature. You're going to want to bring it down. Since you've been welding on that plate, say you're doing a T-joint and you've been welding on that plate, you know, three, four, five fillers, five layers on it, you're going to have to turn it down because that, that plate is building up heat, it's building up temperature. So turn down your remote or turn down your machine, whatever you're running, turn it down in increments by five or ten until you adjust yourself and make that weld look slick. All right, guys, so we're going to explain to you what this is right here. This is a grinder. This is a four four inch grinder it might sound stupid but a lot of you guys don't know what this is so we're we're here to help you guys out this right here is your guard this right here is your guard this right here is your handle sorry about that <laughs> this right here is your lock button so if you're trying to release this grinding this press that button it'll lock your disc and then you're going to turn it towards your chest if you have the the motor facing to your towards your left side Right here on top of your grinder, on top of the motor on your grinder, it will have an arrow and that's showing you which way you got to twist that grinding disc, okay? So this right here is your grinding disc. We have a 1 8 grinding disc. This right here is your wire wheel, okay? This one is pretty much to clean the surface of your weld. This one right here is to pretty much grind down your weld, grind down your plate, pipe, whatever you're working on. Um, the correct way to put this on either or is always put the nut facing towards your grinder, okay? You don't want to put that damn grinding disc with the nut facing out. You don't want to be that guy, put it on, and then whenever you start it off, it pretty much just locks on there, okay? Be very careful with that. Every time you're working with this grinder, make sure it's disconnected. You don't want to leave it connected and then you accidentally press that button and then you put yourself in a bind, okay? Make sure you put that grinding disc on there. Whenever you put it on there, Press that button, lock it up, and snug it up a little bit. If you don't snug it up, once you start that grinder, you get it going, that, that motor and that grinder disc is gonna snap, and it's gonna lock it together. So make sure you snug it on there right, all right? You don't wanna fly it off, hitting you or getting somebody else hurt. Okay, so guys, so sometimes when you're working, that grinder disc might get stuck. If you're, not, if you're having a hard time taking it off, just give it a little hit with your palm. You don't want to hit it straight down, kind of hit it sideways, and that'll pretty much loosen it up. Um, right here, with, with this one right here, with your wire wheel, you don't want to hit it with your palm. Those wires on that wheel will go through your glove. It could get you on that. So if you're in a bind, you can't take it off, you already know this, with this wire wheel, you need to turn it this way, right? So you could go ahead and like set it on the table, get a wrench, and just kind of, kind of dab it or hit it on the side of that grinding disc, hit it on the side of the wire wheel, put it on the side, get your wrench, and hit it right here on the side with your wrench. And that'll pretty much take it off, all right? You do not want to hit it with your hand. Those wires will go through that glove and it will get you. All right, guys, so if you're right-handed, your right hand will go right here on the trigger. This right here is a little safety trigger. You got to pull that back and then your grinder will turn on it. That's pretty much just a little safety, just so if you're working with the, around the grinder and you hit it, you don't want it to go off on you. Make sure your left hand, you always keep one hand on the handle, keep your guard on at all times, and remember that safety trigger back, and then we'll press it. So right here, we're pretty much going to start grinding this plate. We're going to do a, a transition back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to have your grinding disc flat to that plate. You want to add a little bit of angle to it so you can dig into that plate, okay? Don't, get, don't be going all crazy back and forth, all fast, all over the plate. Make sure you're, you're steady. Take your time. Be careful with the, with the equipment. You can get hurt. So you want to be always uh, on the safe side. Let's go. So 
So right here we started grinding this part. We're going back and forth. If you pay close attention, we really didn't get close to the edge. You don't want to get close to the side because you're going to be dropping that grinder down all the time. Do as much as you can. Once you get to that edge, turn around the other way and then go back and forth on that edge. There you go. All right, guys, so we pretty much cleaned up that plate. Take your time, clean it right, okay? It's like I always tell these guys, you want to make sure you take your time, clean it right. You don't want to leave that, that mill scale on there and then have a hard time when you're running that bead. Uh, don't mind this weld. That was in us right here. We're pretty much just using that plate just to burn some rods over it.